All right, welcome back to another Quarter Notes. This is a video series where I look at four albums that I've been either listening to or I figure you guys kind of want to hear my opinions on and either I don't have quite enough to say for a full-length album review or I don't have enough to say about a full-length album review. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we've got four artists, uh, four bands, four albums on here. Uh, so without further ado, let's just dive in. Don't need to change your thoughts. Deep down, you're tired in knots. Beautiful Shades of Grey by James LeBray. Hey, that's kind of fun. It rhymes. Shades of Grey, James LeBray. Uh, <laughs> so it's been a hot minute since James LeBray has put out a solo record. I believe the last one that he did was I Will Not Break from 2014. Uh, he did a, like a... a EP, a single, last year of Kickstart My Heart from Falset, and it was fine. Honestly, I don't remember it at all. Uh, so we're kind of a, a long ways away from my favorite work of his, which was The Elements of Persuasion, way back in 2005. And, you know, when I was kind of getting into James LeBray, especially with Static Impulse in 2010, you know, I, I knew that he had this more dynamic approach to metal uh, by infusing a lot more of like the 70s rock, you know, taking a look at, again, Deep Purple or Led Zeppelin and infusing that kind of style within a metal work so that it wasn't like really, really heavy metal that we would have from like Dream Theater. And it was a little bit more tailor-made to suit James's vocal works. We see that even more with Beautiful Shades of Grey in that it's less of a metal album. In fact, I wouldn't even, I'd be very, very hard pressed to call it a metal album at all. And it's much more of a straightforward rock album. And at no point on this album was I overly excited about any of the tracks. Like I did enjoy the Devil in Drag, you know, the one of the leading singles off of it. It's fun. It's quirky. I also kind of like Wallflower. You know, that one's kind of fun. Cosmic Calling is interesting. Uh, but I feel like a lot of the tracks where they could have used or maybe should have used a uh, electric guitar, they always kind of go into the acoustic guitar. And I, I enjoy that kind of approach, but it doesn't really satisfy any one thing. And it is interesting that the album is called Beautiful Shades of Grey because it really is like this gray, almost no man land in that case. I do like the uh, bonus track of Ramble On, uh, the... Led Zeppelin cover. I thought that was really well done. But yeah, I, I felt like this album just kind of left me wanting more. Um, it was a nice little drop in the bucket in terms of all the music that's coming out lately, but it wasn't anything overly that special to capture my attention. So yeah, this was one that I would probably still stream. Like if you're a fan of James LeBray, this is probably the best stuff that I've heard from him in terms of his vocal performance, in terms of his vocal range, knowing where his range is and staying within it. Um, I think this is probably the best work that he's done in playing in that range, mainly because he can craft songs that cater to that. Uh, and I think they did that very, very well in this. But there's nothing really on this album to keep me coming back to it. So it's a stream. It's one that I... You know, listen to it once or twice, and I'm like, okay, nothing a whole lot for me here, but there might be something for you, so give it a try. One more step on the ladder, so there is no time by Church the Cosmic Skull. So, the fourth endeavor from the UK psychedelic progressive rock, classic rock outfit. The thing that I really liked, especially with their first two albums, Is Satan Real and Science Fiction, I thought that they were kind of a continuation of the presentation that, say, like Polyphonic Spree was putting out. You know, this whole cult-like atmosphere of very happy, joyful celebration of sound and music with kind of darker and strange overtones in terms of like content. Uh, and I was really kind of digging those first two albums. Uh, then in 2019, Everybody's Going to Die came out and I just felt like the band was treading water and not really doing anything new. Like the, the steps from Is Satan Real to Science Fiction wasn't a big one, but I figured, okay, sophomore slump, maybe the next one will come out. Then Everybody's Gonna Die comes out, and I'm like, okay, we're getting more of the same. Let's do something different. Uh, there Is No Time comes out, and yep, it's all the same. Um, so if you ever wanted a band to basically just repeat what they were doing over and over and over again without any real variations, Check these guys out. Uh, if you've heard the first 
well, if you've heard any of their albums, you've already heard this one. There's really no variations in terms of themes. There's no variations in terms of content or style. You know, they're not even really experimenting with anything. It's just more of the same. So if you want that, you're going to love this album. If you want a little bit more, you're going to be sorely disappointed with this one. So again, this is another one that I would stream. You know, it's not bad by any stretch. You know, there's nothing on here that's like, remotely terrible or like I would you know it's one of those I would be hard pressed to say that there's anything really inherently wrong with this album in terms of the music lyrics songwriting ship all that it's all fine it's just it's pretty much the exact same stuff we've already heard before so yeah give it a stream see if it's up your alley um if you like that kind of psychedelic stoner hippie rock you're really gonna dig this this was just a fun one that's all I've got for this one Clark by Michael Eckefeldt. So this is one of the only real solo projects that Michael from Opeth. So Michael Eckefeldt being the main singer, songwriter, lead guitarist, uh, orchestration of sound and music from Opeth. Uh, big progressive metal works. Uh, he's come on and done a soundtrack for the, I believe it's a Netflix series of Clark. It has that Michael Eckefeldt feeling, that Michael Eckefeldt motifs. If you're looking for more of the somber moments that you would hear on, say, like his collaboration with Stephen Wilson of Storm Corrosion, it's probably the closest that you have within this. It's very somber, very melodic, very like ethereal. It's very like it's a soundtrack, right? So you don't have those like really massive noodling aways, like blow down the door riffs that you would have with the Opeth. So it's a lot more somber, you know, it's a lot more chill and quiet in that sense. And I'm loving that. Like I'm hearing motifs and sounds from even like Stephen Wilson's Grace from Drowning is definitely found on this. Like the trilogy of albums, the loose trilogy of Heritage, Grace for Drowning and Storm Corrosion, definitely felt within this project. I've been listening to this quite a bit, uh, like late at night, uh, when I just need to chill out. Uh, or if I'm just trying to go to sleep, you know, having a rough time, finally closing the eyes and closing the doors to being awake and finding myself slipping off to sleep. Uh, I'm loving this. Uh, it's like I mentioned, it's very, very atmospheric, very, very soundscapey, but it always feels very Michael Eckefeldt. It feels very Opeth infused. It's like if you took Opeth and quieted them down uh, and slowed them down as well. So like, I'm also getting feelings of like damnation in that sense as well. This is one that I highly recommend, honestly. Uh, I think if you're a fan of Opeth, if you're a fan of Michael's music, you're really, really going to dig this one. Uh, it, it also reminds me of like, how Stephen Wilson kind of reworked a lot of his songs for The Last Day in June, the music soundtrack that he did for that game that was kind of loosely based off of the music video of Drive Home. It's kind of got that same feel. So like I said, highly recommend this one. Go and check this one out. This is one that I would pick up in physical format without delay. So yeah, I dug it. The Gods We Can Touch by Aurora. So Aurora is a new one for me. I only got like introduced to her music this past uh, couple of weeks and I've dove deep into this particular album. Man, I, I cannot get enough of this one. You know, I love it. I love how unique it is. Like, you know, Aurora coming from the Netherlands, uh, Netherlands? No, Iceland. She comes from Iceland. Don't quote me on that. I could look it up, but I'm too lazy. Um, <laughs> But I'm loving that because you have that kind of like Bjork, um, almost Sigur Ross feel to that with a very poppy indie pop artist kind of all infused into this presentation of music. And I could not stop listening to it. I'm loving both the very somber, ethereal soundscapes that we have on here, but also a lot of the very tangible, meaty, hard hitting moments on this record as well. And I love the blending of the two. Um, if you are a fan of something a little bit different in your pop, if you're a fan of like really juicy harmonies within the higher ranges of sounds, definitely give this one a listen. I've been really, really enjoying this one. It's very unique. I've been listening to a lot of Enigma these past couple of months. Uh, and this one kind of blends very, very well in that. And again, infusing this more electronical, like Icelandic dance to a little bit more stripped back, 
kind of singer-songwriter Americana flavoring at times. And I know that's kind of like, you know, oxymoronic at times, but hey, that's what you got on here. I really found myself enjoying this one. I kept coming back to it. Like there was like two or three days where this was the only thing I was listening to uh, because I just loved how different it was, how unique it sounded to me. Um, yeah, this was another one that I would absolutely pick up in physical format. Uh, I think this is a great entry point for Aurora if you haven't heard her already. Uh, I think it might be one that you guys might like. You know, it's definitely different. Uh, it's not my usual MO, but I've been dipping and diving into these more unique corners of the musical spheres. Uh, and I know she's garnered quite a big of fan base, you know, like I'm looking for... The Cure For Me, one of my favorite tracks off of the album, and it's got like 29 million view or listens uh, on the streaming service I've been listening to. Notes of love approval, run, don't walk to give it a listen. That yeah, was a good time. Very, very good time. So that's what I've got. Those are the four albums for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, which were, or I guess which one was your favorite, which one was your least favorite, which ones have you checked out, and if you have, what did you think? If you haven't checked them out, do so at your own leisure. And that's all I got for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As I mentioned, you know, let me know what you thought by commenting down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, and uh, that's all I've got for you today. That's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.